Hey everyone, welcome to part 4 of this 12-part Python tutorial series for beginners. In this chapter, we're going to learn about conditions in Python, which we can use to control the flow of our program based on whether something is true or false. Instead of just executing every line of our program from top to bottom, we can make it execute just some parts and not others by using conditions. Conditions in Python are implemented using if-else statements, like the ones you see here, and we can use them together with any Boolean expression. Let's go to the code editor and try it out for ourselves. So first I'm going to start by creating a Boolean variable, which I'm going to call is raining. Now I can create a condition by typing the if keyword. So now I have a very simple condition in Python. And when my interpreter gets to this line, it will evaluate this expression. And if it is true, which in this case it is, then whatever is under the scope of the condition will be executed. So if we run that, you'll see that this is raining statement is printed out. But then if I change this to false, and then let me run that again, you could see that nothing is printed out. And although using variables is one way to use conditions, you can also just inline any kind of Boolean expression. For example, I could do if one plus one equals two, which it is. And then if I run that, uh, because this evaluates to true, this line will be printed out. And then if I try to change that to something that's not correct, one plus one is not equal to three, and then I try to run that, then it's false, so nothing is printed out. When a condition is satisfied in Python, then whatever is in the scope of the condition will be executed. And by scope, I mean whatever is indented four levels in. So these are four spaces, but if you're in VS Code, you can actually just press tab to indent four spaces. And that is actually configured down here. So if you click that, you can configure how your tab button behaves when you press it. Uh, but by default, an indentation in Python is four spaces. And as long as I do anything inside this indentation level, it's considered inside the scope of this condition. So if I add more statements or more lines within that scope, they will all be executed within that condition. So if the condition is false, anything inside the condition's scoping level will not be executed, and the interpreter will carry on to the next line of code that is within its scope. So just to demonstrate that, if I unindent, now I'm outside of the scope of the condition. And if I add a statement here, and then I run that, then you'll see that the statement that I've added outside the scope of the condition is executed whether or not the condition is true. That's because the condition only cares about things directly under its scope. So if I set the condition to true, these two lines will be executed, and the last one will still be executed. If I set it to false, then these lines will be ignored because the condition isn't satisfied, but the last line will still be executed. Now, what if we want something else to happen if the condition is false? To do that, we can use the else keyword. So to demonstrate that, let's take our previous example, uh, but now imagine that we're building a trip planner like Google Maps. And if it's raining, we're gonna drive. Otherwise, it can recommend us to take the bicycle instead. To achieve that, we can use this else keyword at the end of the scope of the if statement. So you have the if is raining, and then you've got your four levels of indentation to create a scope. And when you're done with that, you unindent all the way to the same level of the if statement again, and then use the else keyword. And then you have a new scope, which you can use for something that you want to happen only when the condition is false. So let's go back to our code editor and actually implement what we just saw there. So this part is still the same and I'm gonna change this print statement instead. Remember, you have to add it at the same indentation level as the if statement. So when you add the else statement, they have to line up. So you can't add it here like that, and that doesn't work. And my IDE highlights it red because it's invalid. So you have to unindent it, and now this will work. So now I've added my else statement. Let's see what happens when we run that. And because it's not raining, this condition is false, and it doesn't print this out, and instead it prints this out to cycle to the destination. And then if I change this condition to true and run that again, you'll see that now instead it recommends us to drive to the destination. So when you have an if else statement, only one of these scopes will be executed, but never both because the else statement can only execute if the if statement is not satisfied. So it's always gonna be one or the other. There's also an else if statement, which Python shortens to elif, and this will execute if the preceding conditions are false, but it allows you to evaluate another Boolean expression before this one is satisfied. 
So exactly like it sounds, it's pretty much a combination of else and if together in one statement. For example, let's imagine we wanted to add a third outcome to our trip planning app, and that is a recommendation for us to walk. Imagine that we have variables that tells us whether it's raining and whether the destination is far away or not. And now we want to use that to decide whether to drive, walk, or cycle to the destination. So let's think about it for a second. We want to drive if it's raining, whether or not it's far, because when it's raining, if we cycle or walk, we're going to get wet. But if it's not raining and it's far away, too far away to walk, then we might want to cycle. So now let's try to use the conditions in Python to model that logic. So let's go back to our code editor and add our is far variable. And now I want a third outcome, which is to walk to the destination. So let's do that. And I can't just use an else statement like this. This doesn't make sense because this will never get executed. So I have to use an else if here. And then here I need another Boolean expression to evaluate. So here let's add our is far condition. So now to summarize, our logic goes like this. If it's raining, we're not going to check anything else. We're just going to decide to drive because we don't want to get wet. And if it's not raining and it's not far, then we're going to walk to the destination. So let's save that and run it. And right now it's raining and it's far. So with these conditions, it should recommend us to drive. So we'll hit play and it does uh, recommend us to drive. So it's working. And now let's set raining to false, but is far is still true. We'll hit play again. And now it recommends us the cycle. And now if is far is false as well, then now it recommends us to walk. So this is how you can use if, else if, and else statements in Python to control the flow of your code and make it do certain things and not other things based on certain rules that you want to apply to your program. Now, as we saw before, you can use these conditional statements with any kind of Boolean expression in Python, not just Boolean variables like we see here. So you can actually use the logical operators that we learned about previously and create more complex logic. So let's take a look at that. The problem with this app now is that it doesn't really have a scale of distance. So if something is far, we're going to cycle. Otherwise, we're just going to walk. But in the real world, sometimes there's a distance that's too far to even cycle, and then you definitely want to drive. Uh, so there's actually kind of three tiers of farness that we want to model here. So instead of storing as far as a Boolean, we should probably store the distance as a number. So here I'm going to store the distance as kilometers instead, and I'm going to set it to 0.8 kilometers to start with. Now I'm going to want to drive if the distance to the destination is more than 10 kilometers. I think even that's too far to cycle. So let's just set that here and we can use our logical operators with these values and with comparison operators as well to create a more complex condition. So I want to say if it's raining or if the distance is greater than 10 kilometers, then I want to drive. Otherwise, if the distance is greater than one kilometer, then I will cycle. I don't have to check whether the distance is less than 10 here on this line, because for this line to be reached, I know that the distance will have to be less than 10 already. Otherwise, this line will execute. So now let's run that and see what it gives us. Here, it recommends us to walk because it's not raining and the distance is only 800 meters, so it's not hitting this criteria. And if I set the distance to 12, it's too far to cycle and it recommends us to drive. And this raining condition is still active as well, because if I set this back to five, it should normally recommend me to cycle. But if it's raining while that's happening, then it's still going to recommend us to drive. So here is basically a snapshot of how you can model more complex relationships and complex conditions in Python to get your app to do what you want. So now let's wrap this chapter up with a short coding exercise. In this exercise, I want you to write a program for a ticketing system. And the program should check the age of the customers and whether or not the customer is a student, and then use these rules to display the appropriate message based on these pricing rules. So if they're under 18, then the entry is free. But if they're a student or they're over 65, then the ticket is 50% off. And everybody else pays full price. Here's the starting code for this exercise. And I want you to fill in the code using the if else conditions that we learned about today to make the program print the correct message for any given value of customer age and student status. You can change the value of these variables as well, just to double check that your program is functioning correctly under all circumstances. Please pause the video to give this problem a try now. And then once you're done with that, then resume it to see 
one possible solution. So here's my solution to the problem. First, we're going to check if the customer's age is under 18, because then the entry is free. Uh, so we use the else statement to do that, and then we'll use a comparison operator with the customer's age. But if they're not under 18, then we need to check the second condition, which is if they're a student or if they're over 65. So we can use the else if statement for that, and then use the or operator to compare either the student status or the customer age if it's over 65 to check whether or not we should give them 50% off. And finally, after all that, if neither of those two conditions are satisfied, we will make the customer pay full price. So if we run that, then in this case, entry is 50% off because the customer is a student. But if the customer is not a student and we run it again, then they have to pay full price. However, if they're 70 years old, um, then we will give them 50% off. So now I hope you feel comfortable using conditions in Python and understand how you can use them to control the flow of your code. See you in the next video where we're gonna look at our first data structure in Python, a list, which will allow us to work with collections of values instead of just individual values like we've been doing so far.